Hello, my name is Aaron Moore with uh, ABCDL Training. And I'm here today with another version of a pre-trip inspection for uh, a box truck uh, for the state of Maryland. So I'm gonna go through the pre-trip inspection. Hopefully this will give you a perspective and help you out uh, in taking and passing your Maryland state exam. So follow along, here we go. Okay, I'm ready to start my pre-trip inspection for the state of Maryland. In the state of Maryland, what we have to do before we do anything on a pre-trip inspection, uh, we have to complete an air brake test. So what I like to do when I do the air brake test is to talk through the whole thing first. I like to talk through the, um, the air brake test, tell the instructor exactly what I'm doing, and then I turn around and perform exactly what I just said. Um, because it's not, it, it does you no good to do the pre-trip correctly, but say it wrong or say it wrong and do it correctly. So I like to do everything. I tell them first what I'm doing and then I uh, demonstrate it again as I'm saying it. All right, I wanna tell the instructor, the first thing I wanna do is make sure that the wheels are chalk. And what I mean by that is that there's a, there's a block behind the rear wheel so the vehicle won't roll. The next thing I wanna do, I'm gonna start the vehicle up and I'm gonna allow my air pressure to build between 120 to 140 PSI. Once it reaches maximum level, I'm gonna turn the vehicle off. Then I'm gonna turn the key just to the on position, not running, but just into the on position. I'm gonna use my hand to push the parking brake in and I'm gonna use my foot to hold the service brake down. I'm gonna ask the instructor to time me for one minute. I'm gonna hold my foot firm to the ground for one minute making sure that the brake pedal don't move. I'm also looking at the gauge, making sure I don't lose no more than three pounds of pressure in one minute. So once my minute is up, I'm gonna fan this brake. As I fan the brake, my air pressure would drop down. When it dropped down below 60 PSI, the warning light and a warning buzzer will come on. I'll continue to fan the brake until the parking brake pop out between 20 and 40 PSI, okay? Now, I've explained everything that I'm doing, so now I'm going to demonstrate exactly what I said. But prior to doing that, when I sit behind the wheel of this vehicle, I'm going to put the seatbelt on. And when I put the seatbelt on, I'm going to inspect the seatbelt. I want to make sure the seatbelt is tight and secure, properly mounted, not cracked or frayed. Also, make sure it snaps in place. Once I do that, now I'm going to start the vehicle up. We already mentioned that the rear wheels are chalk. So we start the uh, vehicle up, we allow the air pressure to build up to the maximum level. At this point right here, it's already reading 140 PSI, okay? You hear air governor go off in just a second. And that will indicate that the tanks are full. At that point, I'm gonna tell the instructor once again, I'm gonna turn the vehicle off, turn the key just to the on position, use my hand to push the parking brake down, and put my foot on the service brake for one minute. I'm gonna ask the instructor to time me for one minute and make sure I don't lose no more than three pounds of pressure in one minute. So I'm gonna hold the brake firm to the ground and I'm gonna watch the gauge, make sure I'm not losing more than three pounds of pressure within the one minute. Once my minute is up, the instructor will let me know that the minute is up and then I will fan my brake down to 60 PSI where I should get a warning light and a warning buzzer. So I'm gonna hold it firm to the ground My instructor is timing me at this point. Okay, now that my minute is up, I didn't lose no more than three pounds of pressure. Now I'm gonna fan the brake. As I fan the brake, the air pressure is dropping down. At that point, when I 
drop below 60 psi that warning light and the warning buzzer comes on that indicates that my air pressure is below 60 psi i'll keep fanning the brake and should this pop out the parking brake is going to pop out between 20 and 40 psi once that parking brake pop out that indicates that my air brakes are working now I'm going to tell the instructor, I'm going to start the vehicle back up. I'm going to allow my air pressure to build back up. It build up above 60 PSI, the warning light and warning buzzer will go off. And I'll continue to build it back up to the normal operating range, which is between 120 and 140 PSI. All right, as I start the vehicle up and I'm waiting on the air pressure to build up, I'm going to go ahead and do an in-cab inspection. I'm going to start over here. I'm going to inspect my flat mirror and my convex mirror. I want to make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, and properly adjusted to me. I'm going to go to the windshield. Make sure the windshield is no cracks, damage, any illegal stickers on the windshield. I will inspect the seal around the windshield to make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted. I'm going to also point over there and tell the instructor I'm going to inspect those mirrors over there and that seat belt over there the same as I did over here. Once you inspect anything on one side of the vehicle you don't have to re-inspect it on the other side however you just want to mention it okay as i come back over here i'm gonna check my windshield wipers and my windshield washer fluid i want to make sure that those are working okay i'm gonna turn i'm gonna check my right turn signal on the dash to make sure it's working on the dash the left turn signal is working on the dash the four-way flashes are working on the dash I'm going to turn my front headlights on and I'm going to inspect the high beams to make sure that they're working on the dash. Okay. As I come down here, I'm going to check the city horn. Make sure that the city horn is working correctly. If this vehicle had an air horn, I would inspect that. However, it don't have one, so you don't have to inspect it if it's not there. Okay. As I come down here, I want to inspect the heater and the defrost. I want to make sure that the heater and defrost is working correctly. And all okay as down down here i have three pieces of emergency equipment i have a vc fire extinguisher that's properly mounted and fully charged i know it's fully charged because the indicator is in the green underneath the seat here i also have three triangle reflectors that's located underneath the seat this vehicle is also equipped with circuit breakers however if it didn't have circuit breakers i'll make sure i had spare fuses okay i want to come back here i want to inspect this interior light I want to make sure the interior light is working correctly. Also inspect this back glass, make sure there's no cracks, damage, or any illegal stickers on the back glass. Okay? As I come back here, I'm going to explain to the instructor that that buzzer is gone off, that light is gone off, which indicates my air pressure is above 60 PSI. I'll continue to build the air pressure back up to the normal operating range, which is between 120 and 140. Once you hear 140, you hear the governor cut out, go off, that indicates the tanks are full. Okay, at that point, you wanna tell the instructor you wanna check your parking brake. To check the parking brake, you don't even have to touch that. The parking brake is already on. The parking brake is on, I'm gonna put it down and drive. I'll accelerate slightly. I wanna make sure the vehicle don't move. I'll put it in reverse, accelerate slightly, make sure the vehicle don't move. Put it back in neutral and explain to the instructor that my parking brakes are working correctly. Okay? Now, to do a service brake test, you don't physically have to do it. You just want to explain to them the proper way of doing a service brake test. And to do that, I'll put my foot on the service brake, push the parking brake in, put it down and drive, make sure the vehicle don't move. Put it in reverse, make sure the vehicle don't move. Put it back in neutral, pull the parking brake out. Now I would explain to the instructor the proper way of doing a service brake test is that I would let the vehicle coast about five miles an hour, put my foot on the service brake, make sure the vehicle come to a complete stop and it don't sway from one side to the other. Okay, at that point, I'm gonna turn the vehicle off, take the key out of the ignition, take it with me, release the seat belt and continue my outside inspection. inspection. Just remember, when you do this test, the only thing you're doing, you're having a one-on-one -on 
conversation with the instructor except for you doing all the talking. They're just listening to everything you say. You're not really going to get a lot of credit for everything you say, but any good instructor for the most part can tell if you know the stuff or if you're just trying to skate through it. So you just want to talk like you're having a regular conversation when you're doing this pre-trip inspection. All right. As I stand in front of the vehicle, I want to make sure the vehicle is sitting level. I want to make sure it's not leaning from one side to the other. If it was leaning, it could be an indication that I have a flat tire or damaged suspension. I'm going to look down both sides of this vehicle. I want to make sure that there's no obstacles or obstructions on either side of the vehicle. Okay? Now, as I approach the vehicle, I want to do what I call, in football terms, a down and out. I'm going to work my way down and come out of the vehicle to make sure that um, I cover everything. Okay. I'm going to start with the clearance lights. The clearance lights, they're amber in color. They're tight and secure, properly mounted, not missing any screws. This front windshield is not cracked, damaged, any illegal stickers. The windshield wiper blades are not worn excessively thin. These windshield wiper arms are tightly holding the blades to the windshield itself. As I come down here, I want to check the front headlights and turn signals. Make sure they're tight and secure, properly mounted. Make sure that there's no condensation inside the lenses of the headlights. I come down here, I want to inspect this tag. Make sure the tag is tight and secure, properly mounted, not missing any bolts. Look on the ground, make sure that there's no puddles on the ground indicating anything leaking from engine oil, transmission fluid, power steering fluid, radiator fluid, or windshield wiper fluid. The only thing I did was just name the fluids that's underneath the hood. You don't necessarily have to do that, just tell them there's no leaks because you everything I just called out you're going to inspect anyway. Alright, I'm going to walk on this side of the vehicle and unlatch the hood. I'm going to walk on the other side of the vehicle. and unlatch the hood. I'm gonna pull the hood back. When I pull the hood back, I wanna explain to the instructor that the hood is sitting level, tight and secure, and it won't rock back on me, okay? As I walk over here, back behind me, if I could physically see it, is the power steering pump. You can't physically see it, so you just point in the direction of where it is. But I'll tell the instructor, if I can see it, I'll make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, and it's not leaking any fluids. Just remember, anything that carries air or fluid through it, you should have to make sure that it's not leaking. Right here is my oil dipstick. The proper way of checking the oil is that I'll pull the dipstick out, wipe it clean, stick it back in there, pull it back out, and make sure it's above the ad mark. This is the power steering, I'm sorry, the, uh, the transmission dipstick. The proper way of checking the transmission dipstick, if the vehicle was running in neutral, pull the dipstick out, wipe it clean, stick it back in there, pull it back out, make sure it's above the ad mark, okay? Right here, my hoses and clamps. I'll inspect these hoses and clamps, make sure they're tight and secure, properly mounted, make sure they're not leaking, okay? Now I'll come back here. This is the steering rod. I wanna make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted. The steering rod is going into a steering box. I wanna make sure the steering box is tight and secure, properly mounted. It has grease inside of it, so we wanna make sure it's not leaking. The pitman arm. The pitman arm is tight and secure, properly mounted. There's a nut in the carter pin right here that's tight and secure, properly mounted. Connected to the pitman arm is a drag link. I'll inspect that drag link, make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted. Connected to the drag link is what they call a knuckle. The knuckle is tight and secure, properly mounted, not missing any parts. This long rod right here that goes from one tire to the other is called a tie rod. I'll make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, not missing any parts. Now, what I like to do is group all this stuff together and stamp it at the end. And what I mean by that is that I call out all these parts that I just mentioned, and at the end, I'm gonna tell them what I'm inspecting them for. So I'm gonna check the steering rod, the steering box, the pitman arm, the um, nut and carter pin, the drag link, knuckle nut, carter pin, tie rod. Everything is mounted correctly, tight and secure, and nothing's leaking. Only thing I did was group that stuff together, stamped it at the end. Right here is the steering reservoir. I want to make sure that the power steering reservoir is tight and secure, properly mounted, not missing any, um, not leaking, and not missing any parts. Okay. Right here is the frame. I want to inspect that frame. Make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, no illegal welds, it's not missing any bolts. Okay. The leaf springs. 
Release springs are tight and secure, properly mounted, not cracked, damaged, welded, repaired, shifted, or broken. Okay? At the end of the leaf springs are the leaf spring hangers. So you inspect the leaf spring hangers, make sure they're tight and secure, properly mounted, and tightly holding the leaf springs in place. The U bolts are tight and secure, properly mounted, tightly holding the leaf springs together. Okay? The shock absorber is tight and secure, properly mounted, not leaking. Okay? So we've covered the frame, we've covered the suspension, then we go to the braking system. The braking system, I have a brake hose, a brake line, and a coupling. They're all tight and secure, properly mounted, nothing's leaking, okay? Out here is the brake drum. I'll inspect that brake drum, make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted with no illegal wells. Behind the brake drum, if I can see it, is what they call a brake liner. The brake liner is no different than what's in your vehicle, like a brake pad or something like that. But you want to make sure that the brake liner is not worn excessively thin, no oil, grease, or condensation on the uh, on the brake liner. Okay. The tire, the tire is evenly worn, no less than four thirty seconds of tread depth. The side of the tire, no cracks, damage, any illegal patches or bubbles on the side of the tire. Between the tire and the rim is called the bead. I want to make sure no air is leaking from the bead of the tire. The rim, tight and secure, properly mounted with no illegal wheels. The lug nuts, no rust spots or shiny spots indicating loosens. Down here is the valve stem. I'll inspect the valve stem, make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, make sure it's not leaking any air. I'll also explain to the instructor the proper um, tire pressure for the front should be a minimum of 110 PSI. Okay? All right, from here we walk to the other side. Okay, on this side here, remember I, uh, remember I mentioned before that anything you inspect on one side of the vehicle, you don't have to re-inspect on the other side of the vehicle, however you do want to mention it. Now the two items that's over here that's not over there is this uh, coolant reservoir. I'll inspect the coolant reservoir, make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, make sure it's not leaking any fluids. I'll inspect that cap. Make sure the cap is on tight, tight and secure. And I'll also explain to the instructor you would never open that cap while the engine is hot. Okay? The windshield washer fluid is tight and secure, properly mounted, not leaking any fluids. Okay? Now, on that side, we talked about the hose, the clamps, the frame, the leaf springs, the leaf spring hangers, the U bolts, the shock absorber. We talked about the brake hose, the brake line, and the brake coupling. We also talked about the brake drum and the brake liner. We talked about the top of the tire, the side of the tire, the bead, the rim, the lug nuts, and the valve stem. So you group all that stuff together and tell the instructor you inspect the hoses, clamps, frame, suspension, brake, tire, wheel assembly on this side as you did on that side. You don't have to go through each individual item like I just did. You want to inspect these items here the same as you did over there. Okay, we keep moving. We come back here, I want to check the flat mirror and the convex mirror and the bracket. I want to make sure everything is tight and secure, properly mounted, not crack damage or missing any parts. We inspected it while we was in the inside, but we, what we inspected it for was to make sure that it was properly adjusted for driving. Out here, you want to make sure they tight and secure, properly mounted and not missing any parts. Okay, as I come here, I'm going to open and close this door. As I open and close the door, I just want to tell the instructor I want to make sure the door open and close fairly easy, make sure the hinges are not binding. The handrail is tight and secure, properly mounted, not missing any screws. This is called a fuel tank. Always remember to call this a fuel tank and not a gas tank. Because in the eyes of the instructor, if you call this a gas tank, you think it's okay to put gas in a diesel vehicle. It's called a fuel tank, not a gas tank. All right, I'm gonna tell the instructor I'm gonna inspect the cap, the straps, and these hoses. Everything is tight and secure, properly mounted, nothing's leaking. I'm gonna look on the ground, make sure there's no puddles on the ground indicating anything leaking from the fuel tank, okay? As I come back here, underneath here, these things here are called cross members. I wanna inspect the cross members, make sure they're tight and secure, properly mounted with no illegal wells, okay? I'm also gonna inspect the frame back here, make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, no illegal wells, I'm missing any bolts. Okay? This right here is the exhaust. I wanna inspect the uh, exhaust system, make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, 
make sure you don't have excessive carbon soot coming out of the tailpipe, okay? Right here is the drive shaft and universal joint. I'll inspect that, make sure everything is tight and secure, properly mounted, not missing any parts, okay? All right, when you get back here, you pretty much cut this vehicle in half. And what I mean by cut it in half, Everything you mentioned in the front don't apply to the rear. You have to say it all over again, even though it have the same items. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna check the leaf springs. Make sure they're not cracked, damaged, welded, repaired, shifted, or broken. Check the U-bolts. If I can see it, I'll make sure the U-bolts are tightly holding the leaf springs together. The leaf spring hangers are tight and secure, properly mounted with no illegal welds. It's not missing any bolts. The rear shock. The shock absorber is tight and secure, properly mounted, and it's not leaking. On this vehicle, it has an airbag. I'll inspect the airbag, make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, properly inflated. Right here is what they call a torsion bar. I want to make sure the torsion bar is tight and secure, properly mounted, tightly holding the airbag in place. Okay? All right. From there, we'll go to the braking system. Once again, you can't see it. It comes from memory, but if you get stuck on what you can't see, just look in the front. It's the same thing. But I'll tell the instructor if I can see the brake holes, the brake line, the brake coupling, I'll make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, make sure nothing's leaking. The brake drum, if I can see it, I'll make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted with no illegal welds. Behind the brake drum is the brake liner. I'll make sure it's not worn excessively thin, no oil, grease, or condensation on the brake liner. Okay? Back here is the top of the tire. I inspect the tire, make sure it's evenly worn. It should be no less than 2 30 seconds of tread depth. The side of the tire is no cracks, damage, any illegal patches or bubbles on the side of the tire. Inspect the bead, make sure that there's no air leaking from the bead of the tire. The rim is tight and secure, properly mounted with no illegal oil. The lug nuts are tight and secure, properly mounted, no rust spots or shiny spots indicating looseness. The valve stem is tight and secure, properly mounted, and not leaking any air. Okay. The mud flap is tight and secure, properly mounted, not rubbing the ground or rubbing against the top. Okay. Come back here. I'm gonna check this red reflector. Make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, and not missing any parts. Okay. I'm gonna come back here. Point up top. These clearance lights. They're red in color, tight and secure, properly mounted, not missing any parts. I'm gonna check the handle, make sure this handle is tight and secure, properly mounted. The reverse lights, the reflector, the brake light and turn signal light are tight and secure, properly mounted, not missing any parts. Okay. I'll check the handle, brake lights, reflector, turn signal, and brake light on this side, the same as I did on that side. I'll inspect these reflectors, make sure they're clean and visible and tight and secure. Under here is the tag. I'll inspect that tag, make sure it's tight and secure, properly mounted, make sure the stickers are legal and up to date. Okay? As I come on this side, now, once again, I'll tell you, I'm gonna inspect this reflect over here the same as I did over there. Everything that you inspected on that side, you don't have to re-inspect on this side. So you just group it together and stamp it. I'm gonna inspect the frame, suspension, brake, tire, wheel, assembly, on this side as I did on that side. Once you group it together and call it an assembly, it covers everything that you've already talked about on the other side, okay? So I'll walk back. This is my death tank. I'll inspect the caps, straps, and hoses on my death tank, make sure everything is tight and secure, properly mounted, make sure nothing's leaking. I'm gonna inspect my battery. My battery is located right here. I'll inspect the post, the cable, and the hole down. Everything is tight and secure, properly mounted without excessive corrosion around the terminals. I'm gonna check this handle, door, mirror, mirror bracket, fuel tank assembly on this side as I did on that side, okay? When I get here, for the most part, this is pretty much where we started the pre-trip inspection. Only thing we did was made a circle around this vehicle and start and finish where you started at. So at this point, what I'll do, I'll tell the instructor, I'm gonna put the hood down. I'll latch the hood on both sides. Pick up this quarter. 
latch the hood on that side. Now, the only thing left to do is an outside light check. We did an inside light check when we were sitting behind the wheel. Now we'll get the instructor to assist us with the outside light. And we'll check the right turn signal, left turn signal, hazard lights, high beam lights, front head lights, um, um, front head lights, tail lights in the rear, uh, reverse lights, brake lights, and turn signal lights in the rear. And at that point, what you do, you walk around this vehicle again. I would always recommend just taking two minutes to walk around this vehicle again just to see if you've missed anything. But once you're done and you're pretty much sure that you're finished, it's your job, your responsibility to tell the instructor that you're done because the instructor can't stop you. The only way they can stop you is that if you run out of time or you tell them you're done. So make sure you tell them you're finished or they're just gonna stand there and wait for you to say something. Okay? All right, that concludes the pre-trip inspection. Okay, that's the conclusion of the pre-trip uh, inspection for the state of Maryland. Uh, just remember, when, you, when you're doing this pre-trip inspection, it's always a good idea just to pretty much know where, you go, where you're going next. When you call out one item, don't spend a whole lot of time on it. Remember, the instructor doesn't care. They're not gonna know half as much about this vehicle as you do. They're just programmed to listen. So the key is to just know where to go next. You know, when you leave one item, you go to the next item. And, you know, call out the, the item, small detail, move on. Don't spend a whole lot of time on it. This stuff is simple and it shouldn't take you long to do it. Okay, good luck.